If you don't know me, my name is Jill and I'm the homeschool mom to a fifth grader. And if you've watched any of my videos, you probably know that I have three core subjects, reading, French, and math in no particular order. They all take top tier with me. I have been planning for quite some time and talking to my husband at length about math and where I envision actually all three of the subjects, but specifically this video is about math and where I envision I can get Morgan to the end of high school and beyond. One of the things that I want to do specifically for all three of my core subjects with Morgan is the other stuff, whatever. I'm, I can, I can figure that out really quickly. We can get the curriculum for it, but I spend an intense amount of time on French, on math, and on reading. And I realize all homeschoolers are different but we, we have a couple of things in common. One, we're probably 100% all women. And two, we're outliers. You, you are an outlier. Even if you are a traditionalist, you are an outlier by doing homeschool. And I think because of that, there are some advantages in that we're allowed to think differently. We should think differently because we are doing something pretty crazy and pretty different. So I wanna to talk to you about math and what I'm thinking and how I wanna encourage Morgan to do the absolute best that she can and very seriously do so. Just to make this easier, I'm going to assume we're going to use Matthew C throughout the entire time. And if we don't, we don't, that's fine. So we're already using Matthew C and this year we're going to start with the key to math series that is suggested by Live Education Waldorf style of teaching. And I wanna do a recap. So we'll recap here the fourth grade last year. We started with Saxon three, we finished it. We moved on to Saxon five, four, and here's where we stumbled. We began to have a lot of trouble with the spiral system. And so we switched to Matthew C. And because we had gaps, I started with alpha, the very beginning. We went on through beta and we finished gamma. And then we did state testing and that was in May. And that confirmed that we filled all of the gaps that we had, we no longer had those. And then all summer we worked on our math facts and multiplication table. So we're back here to fifth grade and we are through the first several weeks of Matthew C Delta. I already have Epsilon and we may even finish Epsilon, but I, I've purchased that book, I haven't purchased Zeta yet, but for this, for planning purposes, let's just say we finish Delta and go on to Epsilon. And we're going to begin to incorporate key to fractions. Uh, McGraw Hill or McGraw Hill publishes it. And this is suggested by Live Education. And this is Waldorf style. I like this idea here that we have math you see, and then we're moving on to fractions, kind of along, kind of stepping in both sides of, of a couple of subjects or main subjects of math here, because that theme is going to carry on through here, where if we keep with Matthew C and we also add in key to fractions using live education, we'll kind of be tracking two math programs at the same time, but with different topics for a certain extent, which I think will be good. So then we'll go to, oh, we're going to do testing and see where we are. We're always gonna to plan to do testing. I don't think there's any harm to it. Then in the sixth grade, we will do Matthew C. Zeta and begin and finish pre-algebra. And then for the other program, we will do key to geometry. And then testing to see where we are. Okay, seventh grade. Now here is where we will either do Matthew C, Algebra. We might try Denison Algebra for a change of pace, a change of scenery. Uh, I think that that program would work just fine too. If Morgan just kind of wants something different and wants to look at a different type of page, then I can move into Denison. And then Live Education will have us doing Business Math and Economics. And what I want to do here is key to decimals. 
I want to do this as review because we will have already done it in Zeta. So when we move into algebra and we do the business math with Waldorf, I'd like to use key to decimals to keep up with what we have already done. And since we hadn't done key to decimals yet, I think it'd be nice. Kind of a change of scenery paper-wise, but still the same topic as Zeta. And then we'll test. Now, eighth grade. Okay, so I'll do review first. So we will either, I haven't seen a flip through, anybody do a flip through of Denison uh, geometry, but they do have it. I don't know, maybe that, but for now, Matthew C geometry, and this will be review. Yeah, definitely. Okay, then I would like to try our hand at college algebra. I think we could go at Morgan's pace because college algebra, I think, is algebra one and two high school. Uh, I think it just moves, it covers everything, but at a faster pace. We may, it's an option. It's something to think of. And if you have a kid who's fast in math or aggressive with math, then this may be the way to go. Now, if we have algebra and we're self-teaching, so we're self-taught, essentially. Morgan is teaching herself math and I'm, I'm her guide. If you're self-taught, you don't have to go the traditional route. College algebra, you could, I think, jump into pre-calculus from here without doing algebra two because that would have been covered. So just in case, guess what? We're gonna test. All right, ninth grade, pre-calc. And I guess I could put Larson here for pre-calculus and calculus for text. And then we'll do testing. And we'll do any extra needed review if we need to kind of look back at anything, which I think is fine. But I mean, once you get here, you're doing a lot of all of this algebra here, geometry, you're, you're combining it all and moving on more in depth. So by the time we reach here, I don't know that we'll be doing a lot of review, but I want to leave that open, that option open. Okay, 10th grade. Calculus 1. And if we use the college book, the college book covers, uh, let's see, the, the, the first half of the book will cover Calc 1. And then in the 11th grade, Calculus 2 covers the second half of the book. I think. Okay, I purposely haven't done the 12th grade here because I want to leave Morgan the option to do self-study. And I want it to be for everything, not just for math, but this should be where we have sat down somewhere around here and talked about where we're going, if we're gonna stop here, and maintain our math, or if we're going to continue, or maybe we're not there yet, maybe we've hit a glitch here, and all of this pushes forward or pushes back into a later grade, it doesn't matter. Here is just a path. And then here I've got testing also, and testing again. But if we get this far, or even if we get to pre-calculus, I'd like to start having the conversation with Morgan as a future adult, um, what kinds of things she wants to do, where she wants to go after she leaves this house, and what she needs from me in support and education. So she can have the option to continue on or maintain, or maybe she could prep for SAT, uh, whatever. But I want to leave the 12th grade open for now and let her choose. So that's why we're not kind of filling anything in for the 12th grade. And I realize this might seem a little aggressive, but there's no harm in planning this far with this much, especially if I have a girl who is interested in math, who's doing math, she wants to continue to progress, I may as well plan this out and have this as an option. But again, she doesn't see this. This is just in my mind, so I know what we can do and where we'll go from here.
there's an important key to this, and that is that this is my plan, not Morgan's. This is what the homeschool mom does and what goes on in her mind. There is not a day where I tell Morgan, hurry up, you have to finish today or you have to get here by the end of this month because we got to get to calculus two by the 11th grade. It doesn't work that way. There's no pressure on her. And in fact, there's no pressure on me. This is simply planning and having a path open so that as Morgan continues on in her pace, there is a smooth continuation towards something greater than what she might have thought for herself even. And I know I've, I've talked about setting the bar before. And if I set the bar here, she will meet it. If I raise it really high, she might not meet it, but she certainly has blown past the first bar that I had originally set for her. Now, there's no pressure because she doesn't know that that bar is there. I am just placing it in my mind for me to allow Morgan to succeed. Because honestly, I believe thoughts become things, things take on action. And if I don't plan for it, it certainly won't happen. If I do plan for it, maybe it will happen, but I have left the door open to allow for that. So these are my thought processes and maybe I'll do, I don't know what, I don't know that I care to do one for literature, certainly maybe one for French for those language enthusiasts, but this is what I'm thinking and this is how I'm considering math. I hope you've enjoyed. See ya.